Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about bonding. Um, and really today, all we're getting about bonding is the generics about bonding. We're getting some definitions. We're trying to figure out what kinds of bonds are what and why, um, and why things bond in the first place. Um, and to be honest with you, it's pretty simple. We'll get more into detail later with the rest of it. So today we're going to get the topics of understanding of how do bonds form? What is the octet rule and how does that apply to everything? Ionic bonding and covalent bonding and what those things are. So first, how do elements bond? All elements bond for the same reason, to become stable. Everybody wants to be stable. Stability is determined by valence electrons. And atoms tend to react in a way that would lead them to have a stable octet, this idea of the octet rule. So what are valence electrons? Well, we know valence electrons are electrons in the highest occupied energy level of the atom. Electrons that are the, they're usually the only electrons involved in bonding. The D block elements we have a little issue with, but for the most part, the elements that we'll be talking about are only valence electrons that are involved in bonding. And we won't explain much else. So a stable octet, what does that mean? When the valence shell is full, the atom is stable. It's less likely to react. We know this. Example, we know the noble gases like krypton have an octet of valence electrons and are therefore stable. It's a pretty simple concept. So every other atom wants to be like them and wants to be stable. So understanding compounds some more. We can have two kinds of compounds formed basically. We have binary compounds. Binary compounds are compounds formed from only two elements. And these compounds can be either ionic or covalent or molecular. Ternary compounds are compounds formed from three or more elements and also can be either ionic or covalent. But we're only going to be looking into ternary ionic compounds in the end. So this term binary, bi meaning two, ternary, three or more. So we're looking at the number of elements that make up these compounds to try to determine if they're binary or if they're ternary. So really, that's just a vocab word, just vocabulary that we need to make sure that we understand. So if we look at these, which are binary and which are ternary? So binary, remember, means two elements, not two atoms, just two elements made up of the atom. So here in this one, we have sodium and we have chlorine. That's two elements, so that's binary. Okay, we have carbon and we have oxygen. That's two, so that's binary. We have nitrogen, we have oxygen. That's only two elements, so that's binary. Magnesium and fluorine, oh, that's binary as well. Okay, here we go, Nit potassium. Nitrogen and oxygen. Okay, hang on. That's got more than two, so that must be ternary. Carbon and hydrogen. Well, that's two elements, so that's binary. Lead and chlorine. Oh, that's binary as well. Oxygen and hydrogen. Well, that's binary too. Copper, sulfur, and oxygen. Oh, that's a ternary one. And then sodium or sulfur, I'm sorry, sulfur and fluorine is binary. So we can see that if we can tell the number of atoms or the number of elements that make up the compound, not the number of atoms, the number of elements that make up the compound, we can determine if it's binary or ternary. Ways elements achieve stability. So how do we do that? The first way that we achieve stability is by, is by transferring electrons. And the second way is by sharing electrons. So when we transfer an electron, element that wants to lose electrons will lose them to an element that wants to gain electrons. In doing this, both elements achieve a stable electron configuration or an octet. When we say a stable electron configuration, we're talking about an octet. In sharing electrons, an element that has four or more valence electrons, with hydrogen being the exception, can share electrons with other elements. And again, in sharing, they both achieve a stable electron configuration or an octet. So which type of elements want to lose and which type want to gain? So losing electrons. Elements with low valence numbers like to lose electrons. So gaining electrons, elements with high valence numbers tend to gain electrons or share electrons. Which elements on the periodic table generally have low valence numbers, metals or nonmetals? What do you think? You said metals, you were right. So which elements on the periodic table generally have high valence numbers, metals or nonmetals? If you said nonmetals, you would be right. So transferring electrons will form when will be formed between a metal and a nonmetal. So in order to transfer electrons, 
we have to have one that will lose and one that will gain. And that's between a metal and a nonmetal. That will always happen. So these kinds of bonds are called ionic bonds. If we're sharing electrons, that's going to happen when we have nonmetals with other nonmetals. And these kinds of bonds are called covalent or molecular bonds. Okay, pretty simple. Metals with nonmetals are ionic, nonmetals with nonmetals are covalent or molecular. So, which are ionic and which are covalent or molecular? So, let's look. Sodium, is it a metal or a nonmetal? Oh, it's on the left hand side of the periodic table, which means it's a metal. Chlorine is on the right hand side, so it's a nonmetal. So, this is ionic. Carbon, carbon is on the right hand side of the line of metals. So is oxygen, so it is covalent or molecular. Nitrogen, again, next to carbon on the right-hand side of the line of metals, so is oxygen, so that is covalent. Magnesium, okay, magnesium is on the right-hand side of the periodic table, or I'm sorry, the left-hand side, on the other side of the line of metals. Fluorine is on the right-hand side, so this would be ionic. Here we go, we have three, but that doesn't really matter. We just have to look. This guy is considered a group. We'll talk about that a little bit later. We have potassium, which is a metal, nit nitrogen and oxygen, which are nonmetals. So that's going to form an ionic bond. Carbon and hydrogen. Carbon is a nonmetal. Hydrogen is also a nonmetal. Yes, I know where it is on the periodic table, but remember, it's the only nonmetal that's there. So this is covalent. Lead. Now be really careful because lead looks a little distinguishing because we, we might be able to get it a little confused, but it is on the left-hand side of the line of metals, so it's a metal. Chlorine is on the right hand side, so that is ionic. Hydrogen, definitely a nonmetal. Oxygen, definitely a nonmetal, so that is covalent. Then we come here, copper. Copper is a metal. It's in the D block, but it's still a metal. And we have sulfur and oxygen that are both nonmetals, so that is also ionic. And then we come down here to sulfur and fluorine. Sulfur is a nonmetal, fluorine is a nonmetal, so that is covalent. So hopefully um, you've gotten enough information to begin thinking about this idea of bonding and what's happening. Um, there will be a worksheet that you need to pick up also from uh, Blackboard. So please make sure that you do all of those things um, this evening. Um, there will be more available to you a little bit later on. Okay, thank you.